Welcome to the Ripple Effect by the Alliance. We are committed to raising the frequency of our planet. We'll discuss hot topics, share practical tools and sacred frequencies to reveal the magic in your life. Come, Come laugh, laugh, cry, and, and have fun with us. <laughs> hey, welcome back everybody to the Ripple Effect podcast. We are your hosts, the Alliance, Sarah myself, Stacia, and Hannah. We are excited. We have a really um, fresh, interesting episode for you guys. Um, perception versus reality or reality versus perception. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about um, something that happened and what, what sparked this episode and the beauty, beauty that came from it. Um, and then the RAS, which I'll get Hannah to talk about. Um, but why don't we, do we want to kick that off with that? Just explaining like what the RAS is, or do we want to hop into, um, explaining like why we want to talk about reality versus perception? What, what do you want to do? I think we should really talk about, uh, well, the RAS, we've been promising that we're, we now, mention it and we talk about it. And I keep saying, well, we're going to talk about that later, later. But the reason why we want to talk, we chose this particular episode to talk about was because something happened. And I think we should, maybe Stacia can kick it off saying um, what actually, okay, why let, we're talking about that. Yes, yeah, so let's start with that uh, to give some context. And then okay. that way um, we can and they will circle back to the brain part of it. Okay. okay, so I'm gonna pass it over to you, Stacia. We're gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, without going crazy into detail, because we have so much to tell you about this. Yeah, I said something as Hannah was was on one of her Hannah sprees, <laughs> and the way that I meant to say this did not land for her the same way that I felt it should. And so we talked a little bit, but we didn't really talk. And we discovered the way that she thought about it and the way that I thought about it were completely different. And really, with, without a lot of context, this could have just destroyed everything because her feelings were hurt and I didn't know. And Stacia three years ago would have been offended that her feelings were hurt because I wasn't trying to offend her. And then that's when we started realizing this concept of perception and reality and how everybody brings something different from one situation. And, and this is why we're here today because we had this incredible, incredible conversation that I believe a lot of people could not have had. And so we want to share with you, you know, the reason that it really worked with us and, and how you can kind of, you know, use us as, as an example to maybe avoid situations like this in your own life, because I love these ladies and I would never want to hurt them. And, and really we've got to make sure that, you know, that communication, that channel is open and not just the words, but the actual communication of your feelings and, and really embodying what you're saying and not just like, oh no, that's not exactly, oh no, I didn't mean that at all. It's not really good enough. <laughs> so that's, that's why we're here today is to just let you know, like what happened and and why I feel it's really important to talk about this. And especially with that reticular activating system, because Han is going to break that down for us as far as why we are always looking for reasons for our, our brain wants us to be right. And that could have really been a problem, but we are very strong women and we were able to maneuver this and, and really come out with a lot of I mean, I feel like I really grew today. Like we've grown so much, but I really feel like we have grown in such an exponential way from the conversation that we just had this morning. So we're here to share it with you. 
Yes. Yes. And even Sarah, I'm going to let you, Sarah, express what you said to us this morning about being in committees and, and knowing that this conversation could not possibly not have taken place with other groups. And and we were just just before we were coming on, we we realized that the thread that ties us together is our deep love for each other. And how we weren't about to let anything get in our way. And and we were prepared to talk it out and we established very quickly a safe place for each one of us to express fully how we felt. And, and frankly, today I felt so hurt. You guys let me express myself completely and heard me from beginning to end of how I was feeling, why I was feeling that way. And I also um, was able to, because this happened last week, over the weekend, I made sure that I put myself, because we, after this event happened, we found out pieces of information that we weren't privy to before it happened. And I was like, oh, well, if I had had that information, like if I was Stacia with that information, how would I have reacted to what I had said? And I was like, I, I probably maybe would have been worse, right? Who knows what I would have done? But as well as we have other things that we do together besides the podcast. And I was saying that I felt proud because I, I didn't bring my feelings of how I was feeling to the other things that we did. And we were able to, I was able to, actually give the best of me the way I like it even though I was feeling hurt and I was feeling and I was like I was able to say okay this is not about your feelings put your feelings like put them aside walk in the room leave your feelings at the door do what you do best then on the way out if you want to pick up your hurt feelings pick them up put them in the bathtub for the weekend or whatever <laughs> it is that people do to make themselves feel better and uh, and then figure it out and then the conversation is going to be had when the time when the right time comes and we were able to move through that in the most amazing way i i am so proud of us because i think we i mean if i may say so myself i think we did a spectacular job of creating a safe space for us to express ourselves, agree, know that we're going to have different opinions on things, but being willing with our hearts to hold the differences and still be okay with them. And what was interesting, what happened is that all those differences in my the way I felt, and correct me if I'm wrong, all of those differences disappeared. Yeah. Because we realized they weren't that different. Right? There, there, were, there was more commonality than difference between us. And the, the love that we have, I mean, we have never even met in person. Right. Oh, that's true. Right. Feels like we have, but it's true. Yeah. We haven't even physically hugged each other. We've done it energetically. Kind of, yeah. but, <laughs> but we haven't even been in the same room together ever. Right. So how fragile could that could that bond be mm -hmm. when you haven't even met in person? right? We don't know a lot of stuff of our past. We don't know. There's so many things we're discovering about each other as we go along. And this podcast has been amazing at that. It's like, really? <laughs> I see us going like, you did that? This happened to you? Oh my God. Right? So it could very well have been a deal breaker for us. Yeah. 
right? And Stacia was saying, what were you saying? Stacia's like, you can't be offended. I'm offended, you're offended. Yeah. <laughs> right? I said three kind of years upset. ago, had you been upset for something that I didn't mean for you to be upset, I would have been upset. Like, how dare you be offended? I'm offended. You can't be offended. You know, like, but then I'm thinking about people and their families and like situations where sometimes people will just cut each other off. And, and I'm sure it's for way less than what we were going through because everybody wants to be right. And it's the way that I see it is the way that it is. And we were able to rise above that and look at each other's points of view. And, and that, that's what was so beautiful about it. It's like, a lot of people don't know that you've got to be willing to step outside of your perception to see that there are so many, there's so many different ways that it can actually be for anybody else. Yeah. 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 And that, that's one of the things I was saying to the ladies before this, I was like, what do you think it was? How are we able to do this? Because Hannah mentioned, like, I've, I told the ladies this morning, I'm like, at the end of like, when we were done talking, like, I've been a part of so many committees in my previous job, working on teams with people. I never really enjoyed that because like things would happen, right? And there was always conflict and people didn't know how to resolve it. And I said this, I've never seen this happen before the way we did, the way we handled it. And with so much respect, nobody was yelling at anyone. We were able to just share openly. We heard each other and 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 we listened it was like someone spoke and we're actually listening you know which not a lot of people do they're listening and they're like when is it my turn to talk and yes. or what am I going to say you know I'm like I'm listening time. but I'm listening to yeah. what am I going to say and back go to, to you defensive mode and I, okay how can yeah. I counter that and there was none of that right and it was mm-hmm. it was listening and like Stacia you said it so beautifully it was like being able to look from above and take yourself out of it and look from above and see someone else, someone else's perspective, right? And i me, I was looking at, okay, I, I'm looking at how it went down, looking at Stacia, knowing Stacia so well, and, and how it came across for her, and then looking at Hannah and knowing Hannah so well, and, and what her intention would be, and how it came across, and it was just like, it was honestly like we were analyzing something that was, wasn't even us anymore. Like it was like, okay, let's look at this as though it's other people's perspective. And yeah, it did come down to, it wasn't about like, do we disagree or agree with each other? It was like the delivery and, and, and having that compassion for one another. And that was my big takeaway, right? was like us having that compassion for each other, because that's then what we're trying to do and spread for other people, right? Is have that compassion. So, um, I was like in awe of us. <laughs> I was like, man, man, nobody, I've never witnessed something like that before. And I'm like, and I got to be a part of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Hannah said something that was great. She said that what we were doing was really going to be a catalyst for like healing so many parts of our life, because now we're going to look at all kinds of situations differently. And that's really what we're sharing with our listeners is that you've got to be willing to, to, to take off those blinders and see that there's so much, there's so many more perceptions around you than what you're perceiving and, and, and not harbor your feelings into what you feel like someone else should be feeling like oh, I'm feeling this why aren't you feeling this you know or yeah. so it's just it was really today's been really incredible and I really feel like we we really solidified this bond that we already have by just showing each other that this is real you know this work that we've done has really taken us to like a place that I didn't even know that I could be because even with your own family, you know, you've, you've got all this bickering and all this disagreement and it's like, I can come to either one of you and, and we're literally, there's no judgment. And, and we really showed today that 
we can we can be hurt and say, you know what, let's just see what actually happened. Let's look at the whole picture and no, this wasn't intentional. This is what happened. And, and, and it's like, you just grow from that. And, and it was just really beautiful. So. And also I think that taking responsibility, right? I was like, I messed up here. I know. And I did too. Uh, I'm like, I messed up too. Like, like, we're both like and this. we're like, yeah, well, we messed up and this messed up. And it's like, but I feel that it was, and in the end, we're all feeling grateful that it actually happened. Yes. So how amazing that I was like, at the end, I'm like, Ugh. I'm so grateful it happened. I'm glad it did. And and we're like, oh my God, it was a it, it was a very gosh, it was a critical moment. Yeah. It was a critical moment in really acknowledging who we who each one of us is and the place that we're coming from, and knowing that there's zero malicious intent from any one of us, number one, but also creating that safe space where we can communicate the way that we're feeling without without feeling, oh, there's gonna be retaliation if I say how I feel, mm -hmm. or I'm going to have to be walking on eggshells after I express myself. And that's exactly what we were saying. It's like, I just feel so um, comfortable in, in expressing my view but also it's because we've done the work, mm -hmm. right? And we've been in alignment for so long. We worked at being completely in alignment with what we're feeling, what we're thinking, what we're saying, and what we're doing. For three years, we have been methodically going step by step by step saying, okay, how are we going to make this match? When you're feeling one thing, thinking one thing, saying another, like in the moment we were all present mm -hmm. for the conversation. There was no, oh, this is between Han and Stacia. Let me, maybe Sarah's like off on a tangent. No, it was, we were all there in the moment, listening to each other, seeing each other's point of view from a detached, from an emotionally detached perspective that we have worked at looking at things from a bird's eye view. Like, look at your life, or like detach yourself, detach yourself from the feeling. We've had to learn that. That is not something that any, I was not taught that when I was little, were you? No, no. Right, nobody taught us oh well do not bring your feelings into it because your feelings are the opposite subjective. Yeah. it was not the opposite it's like be mad stay mad <laughs> right call the resentment because your feelings right. Were hurt yes right and a lot of the times it's not about our feelings mm -hmm. our feelings are just consequential they just yeah. happen to be hurt in the process but we get hurt based on the perception of what's happening, yes. right? Because we have, and this I learned from the landmark for many, many years ago. And that, when somebody explained that to me, that I was like, I am staying here. I want to have this landmark form be given to me right now because I was like, oh my God. And it was explained to me, this is reality. This is your lens through which you see reality. What happens is we're like this, right? Our view, our perception of reality is on top of the actual real reality, which in with the years, I realized that because I used to always say there's three truths, right? Your truth, my truth, and what really happened. But it's not even that. I think there's many more sides to it. I've learned in the process of, of doing this work that there's many more realities depending on what angle you're looking at things from, regardless of your filter. And that's the reticular activating system that we're gonna go into. But it's like, this is what happens. We're looking at the reality from our lens. 
Okay. Right. And the forum, they said, we're going to do this. And when the person said that, I'm like, I want, I need that. I want that. So <laughs> I've been working on this. My daughter must have been two. So 27 years when I did the forum for the first time. And I can say today, 27 years later, that I feel like I've graduated. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I and she quantum leaped us into her yes. she quantum leaped us with her yep. finally got it finally got what it is to not bring my freaking feelings into it uh, last week I was like I don't want to do this I don't want to go I'm gonna cancel I'm, I'm so upset and then I'm like f that upset put it on the freaking suitcase you gave your word that you were going to do this and my word is more important than my feelings. And I was able to do that. Yeah. And in a spectacular That's... fashion too. Because I had no idea. I, you know, I didn't even know. <laughs> I would never have known. I didn't even know. No. I would like, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by, you yeah. know, by all of it because I, I yeah. it's, it's true. It was right. so eloquent, eloquently, yeah. how do I say that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Eloquently done. Like it, and I feel like today, like witnessing this and being part of this was like, I agree, Stacia, I feel like I've like quantum leaped. It's like, this took me into a whole new like realm. And it, I'm like, I, I, at the end I was speechless. I'm like, I, I've never been a part of something like that. Like, it's just. Well, know. it gave and me it, hope that that peace is possible. Ah, uh, yeah and I think you said it Stacia it was like we this is like growth beyond growth and it's like learning how to know and do better going forward right right and yeah. I think everything gets to be like that learning moment but it's whether you choose to take that as a that opportunity or if you're just gonna be like well I'm not talking to so-and-so for the rest of my life like <laughs> right hey okay, what like this is where is this getting us Right. Right. And coming from someone like me, who is like, I feel slighted and I'm like, I'm done with that person. My mom always tells me, you're so harsh. It's like, you don't give people a chance. And I'm like, nope, they have one chance. That's it. And I would go, I'd be proud of that sometimes. I'd be like, nope, they hurt me. I am done. And I move on onto something else and something different. And um, it's it's like, for me, it was just like an incredible thing that I didn't have to do that. And I didn't feel like, even though I was like, I'm prepared to die on the line for my beliefs, but it's so amazing that, um, yeah. so nobody has to sacrifice their beliefs yeah. or their integrity. Oh, and I feel nobody like has to settle. Yeah, nobody has to compromise, and that's a lot of people are told, like in marriages, in relationship, you gotta compromise. I don't believe in compromise. Yeah, and I feel like it wasn't even. Um, and this is this is important for everybody. A lot of times, it's not even what you think it is. Like last night, I had a conversation come up, um, and it led down. It, it led to something else. I'm like, oh, this is what I really need to talk about, right? And same with us. It wasn't about whether we agreed or disagree. It was like, the, but no, this is how the way things happen made me feel. And this is um, this is what I actually need to talk about. Not whether we disagreed or not on the thing. It was like how things unfolded and how we each felt in that moment, right? Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, now the time to talk about that. And, and, and like be able to see each other's perspective on that right so right and made us aware of how what we say can affect people yeah 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 how important it is because like we're choosing to be in a public yeah to do this but we're all in the public platform of our lives mm. Right. And we all have a responsibility to the people that are around us and the people that we love and the people who love us and the people that we 
interact with it e with each day and to be more mindful of yeah i'm saying my piece but if my piece is going to create hurt in someone else's life then what good is it right and also it i feel it, it goes both ways right it's also about stop being so fucking sensitive because our feelings sometimes get in the way of seeing things more clearly yeah and they i think cloud our lens yeah and that's what i loved about our discussion today because like each of us was able to say like oh here's where here's where I was maybe too sensitive. Here's where I was maybe too like lax on it. Like we were able to each recognize, okay, here's my, because it, when these things happen, it's not, to me, it's not one person's fault when things like that happen. Like each one of us has ownership over a conversation, an argument. And I'm talking in general about people in their day-to-day -day life. If you're getting in an argument with somebody, no matter what it is, if you're having um, a conflict with someone, there's two of you it's not just one person right so yeah. at some point we have to and I think it's so big that we were all and I give more of the credit to you ladies going for that was like you were both able to look and say oh wow yeah here I didn't even realize I did this or oh yeah here's where I did this I know I did this and I'm able to look at it and mm -hmm. that's where it was like oh, okay I see what you were seeing now and I see yes. what you were seeing now. Ah, oh, okay, this makes sense. And you can see why things unfold the way they do. And mm -hmm. I think that is so um, significant and why we were able to come to like such a beautiful resolution. And that's a big takeaway for people. And it's some, luckily for us, we're all in that same vein, but sometimes what can be a challenge is if, if I'm having that conversation with someone who's not able to do that, it's like, right. oh, now we really got to be the stronger person. Like, right. got to just be able to like. Well, like, I think if we bring the listening and the love and the compassion into it, so much can be dissolved yeah. from that yeah. listening. And we were saying, right, it's like. Sometimes we're listening, but we're, we're, we're actually not listening. We're hearing and we're already figuring out, but how do I come back and shut them up? How do I make sure that I can prove my point? How, how am I right? I, that uh, particular activate. How can I make them know I'm right? Okay. Um, can you talk about that more, Hannah? And it's so funny because I tell these girls, I have this um, calendar that is, it, what did I say? Unfuck yourself or whatever. And today's I flipped it off and I, I did it after our, our call and I looked at it and I fucking laughed out loud. It was, what if you're wrong? <laughs> it was like, okay, shut up. <laughs> we just had our, we're good. I'm glad I looked at it after because before. <laughs> right. Yeah. Because accepting, you know, our human brain is wired in such a way. First of all, we're finally getting to talk about the reticular yeah. activity. <laughs> yes. Hey. yes. Reticular comes from net. And it's a network of neurons. Right? That network of neurons is the filter through which we see life. And that filter, okay, so I'm gonna explain it in a in a in a very visual way for those who are visual. Um, the colors of the rainbow have a certain um, uh, frequency, right? The red has a lower frequency. The violet has a higher frequency. It goes from 400 angstroms to 700 angstroms. That is how much we are able to see the colors of the rainbow and all the blends in between. All right. But it's compared to what exists is a very limited view of light. Very. There is there is infrared, there is ultraviolet. Do we see it? Do we see microwave? Do we see cellular waves? Do we see 5G, 4G, 3G, 2G, whatever? It's all there. If we were able to perceive it all, we'd be like this. We couldn't even move. 
because we are existing in a soup of so many things that are happening that we can't even perceive, right? That's why people have the veil, they say the veil is thinning because people move to, when we die, we move to a higher frequency or a different frequency, whatever. And sometimes we're able to communicate with people who have moved on. Don't know how it happens. Don't know, haven't been privy to dying and communicating with the people back here on earth. I will probably come back and tell you if I find out. She'll tell us on another episode. Sharing, <laughs> yes, <laughs> once I've died. I'll come back and tell you. But we have a very limited view visually, auditorily. As there's, a, there's an application that kids use in school. They go, and it's driving the kids crazy and the teacher somebody over 40 can't hear it oh, unless right? you're stasia and then yeah. you can hear it and it's awful it is awful yeah. <laughs> exactly and but when we start losing the amount of hearing as we age right we're we even go less and less and less that's why there's the for the dogs yes right and the dogs will hear it but we won't there are sounds out there that we don't hear that are happening all the time. There are things that we don't see, okay? So what happens is that our reticular activating system starts getting programmed by, I'm sure past lives, generational information, it gets affected by where you're born, when you're born, what area of even of the city you were born, right? If you look at, at neighborhoods, let's call, let's do Manhattan, which is the, a place I'm very familiar with, right? If we go, there's Central Park, right? If you go to the top of Central Park, it's Harlem. If you go, to the bottom of Central Park, it's Midtown. And in between, on the east, you have the east side, wasps, you think, you know, white, Anglo-Saxon Protestant people live there. You go to the Upper West Side, all the artsy people, you know, more Jewish, more creative, all the writers, all the, all the creative people, Upper West Side, Greenwich Village, um, all the uh, artists, who were at first all the broke people and artists were down in Soho. Now all the millionaires have taken over Soho, right? But it's like, you know, it's like, well, who do I want to hang out with? Do I want to hang out in the Upper West Side or the Upper East Side? Mm. Completely different neighborhoods. And if somebody's born in the Upper East Side, they're going to have a completely different view of the Upper than the Upper West Side people. And it's like a park in between. Yeah. All right. So if we do the microcosm and then we go into the world, right? When we have people in the US wearing like a little little square bikini, you know, and going around like with threads in their behinds and showing all their anatomy. And Ooh, then you huh? have somebody <laughs> from you have somebody from Arabia, yo, yes. Come, they're gonna be horrified. Oh, and then totally. the Americans go to Arabia and they're horrified by you know mm -hmm. how are you the oppression against women, whatever, blah 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 blah. Why? Because that is their point, unique point of view from a geographical standpoint. That's epigenetics, right? When not only is your genetical makeup influencing how you feel how you think what you think about what's right what's right what's wrong but also your environment mm -hmm. like if we were born in saudi arabia i guarantee you we would be just as horrified when we see somebody walking around naked or men walking around with string bikinis i think that should be outlawed regardless but i'm horrified <laughs> of that and i am in canada <laughs> <laughs> but you know no. it's like there are certain things that I will horrify us mm -hmm. but do they mean they're wrong exactly 
does it mean that that person is wrong or bad or whatever? No. And the thing is, we spend our entire life fighting against what's wrong or incorrect, beating ourselves up for not being perfect. Right? Who has who's who is a recovering perfectionist? Like yes. here, I, I, I. <laughs> all three of us. You know, we're we're in recovery from perfectionism. Right. I think I've relapsed several times. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but we spend our entire life a trying to be perfect and fighting against what we believe mm. is wrong incorrect not perfect right and holding on for dear life for the things that we're that we believe are right that not that are not necessarily they might give us the illusion of rightness because they give us some sort of comfort and feeling of safety but are they right and correct i really don't know because if I look at it from a different angle, like remember we we did that exercise is like describe this pen. Now you describe this pen. Now you describe this pen. Now you describe this pen. So there's how many different points of view? Okay, describe this pen and you're just seeing this. Yeah. What pen? If I show you this, right? Can you guys see? Yeah. Oh, describe yeah. this pen. Right. You're gonna be like, what? It's a circle. <laughs> It's a dot. What pen are you talking about? Right. Right? And if I say this or 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 this, how many points of view can we get? We can get a bajillion points of view. Is anybody who's describing this wrong? It's a different, it's just a different point of view. And when we remove our feelings from it and we detach, we're able to start seeing the forest. Because at this point, when we have, where we're so married to our beliefs, we don't even see the tree. Mm -hmm. We're looking at the bark so up close and we're just looking at this um, much. And it's like, we can't even call it a tree. It's like calling this yeah. a pen, right? But if we back off, ah, uh, it can see the pen now. Yeah. And it has different sides. <laughs> and they're not all wrong. And they're not coming at me. And they don't want me to, you know, it's like a different point of view and that's that's and that's the reticular activating system the filter through which we see life so when we start <laughs> and then removing it we're, we're we're like oh i can put my filter on the side for a second and be open to learning something new yeah and when we begin to be in alignment with who we are we can show up and be present, yeah. right? Which is what we did today. And no, at no point, because I, I spoke for a long time and at no point did I feel judged for saying what I felt. At no point did I feel that you guys were figuring out what you were gonna say after I finished. At no point did I feel like I better be ready for the attack after. It was just like, open my heart, be allow myself to be vulnerable, say, I went through the gamut. I, my, I was like, I was mad. <laughs> and you're like, what? And he's the right. It was like, I could see the surprise in your face. Then yeah. she's like, what? And and, and 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 I didn't hear you say, but I'm <laughs> no, <laughs> right. No, but no. it could have easily have gone right. that way, like you right. said, right? It's like, no, I'm mad. You have you don't have a right to be mad. And then you were like, oh, I didn't like in my 
zeal to to protect other other feelings mm -hmm. i i didn't even notice right, right? and because that and, was not my intention and i'm like how would that make you mad yeah but then you told me and i'm like i understand that and you're like and oh, then you're like oh, oh i understand why you didn't know that and so yeah yeah, yeah. and i'm like but it's so easy to fun. not know because i can i all the entire weekend all i did was put myself in your shoes now when we knew because at the end we figure out you knew some information that we didn't and i was like yeah you know and and i own up to the responsibility that we're doing a public platform and the last thing i would ever want is to hurt anybody's feelings or to have somebody who doesn't know me come into the podcast and hear something out of context and just one thing mm -hmm. because i i failed to present the entire context of what i was saying because i'm speaking to you guys and some days we forget that there's people who may not know us right right coming in and they're like hearing things out of context but but people are also going to hear what they're going to hear because we have an auditory filter we have a visual filter we have a heart filter for our feelings right, right? Yeah. and we're like oh i'm gonna hear what i'm going to hear exactly unless i train myself to not do that I hope we were able to bring enough context without telling oh. the whole story for no, people. I think, uh, yeah, I know. I, I think it was, uh, you guys did an excellent job. And I'm sure some people are listening might know exactly what we're talking about. Uh, some of our listeners and others. Um, that's the other thing. You don't need, you don't need all the details to the focus on, Ooh, what went wrong? Yeah. And I think yeah. that's again, where people get stuck, they get stuck on the details instead yes. of looking at the bigger picture, T taking yourself, looking from above, what, why, what's the both points of view here. Okay. Let's, mm -hmm. how can we, um, heal this? And again, no one do better for next time. I think it was beautiful. And I think, um, I'm, I'm just proud of us for like being able to vulnerably share and bring, bring this, this is what our podcast is, right? Where we have, we, we said from the beginning, we're going to like, if we're learning and growing, we're going to share it because, um, it, it only benefits the listeners to hear and see how we're doing these things and how, um, we're not perfect <laughs> and we're learning. We're still growing this morning. We grew like crazy. And, but we're willing and we're open to it and we're open to listening and we're open to seeing things with a different point of view and, and growing and learning and changing and all the beautiful things that come with being a human. So, um, yeah. And how you do anything is how you do everything. And, and we've said, and one of the, one of the primary things that we have agreed on doing is by, is that we lead by example, lead by example. Yeah. And we're never going to tell our listeners to do something that we haven't, when we haven't walked the walk, we're not going to tell you, oh, you should do this and use you as a guinea pig. I was saying, right, we don't use people as guinea pigs. Right. We are our own guinea pigs. We figure it out. And then we're like, we just got through this thing. <laughs> Come on over. You can do it. You too. can do it too. <laughs> if we can do it, you can surely yeah. do it. Because right. I'm like station when you said like, and I think Hannah, you said to Three years ago, totally different story. I would have right. done things totally differently too, right? And that's why I say always, I'm so proud of us for how we handle things. And, you know, life throws challenges at us. Um, and, and we find a way to navigate, learn, grow, and move on. So, uh, yeah. and we're better for it. Like You'll have the love intact. Stronger. Yeah. So, Stacia, do you have a quote of the day for us? Thank quote you. of the day graphic. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs> quote of the day. Yes. I do have a quote for the day. <laughs> and it's a good one. It is a really good one. Because... I haven't, I have yet to hear a bad one. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Thank you very much. Me Thank too. you. Prepare yourselves. Perception does not define who we are, 
but it does define where we are limited and where we are not yet free. Georgie Y. Johnson is an English literature graduate from Oxford. Oh my God. <laughs> Literally goosebumps. I could cry. Wow. I mean, that's so perfect. It's like, yes, your perception is where you're limited because we always feel like what we see is the way it is. And it's like, no, everyone sees everything so differently. Oh my gosh. And like, if we if we had stayed where we were before this morning we we would have been limited i don't even think like you said it had the potential to destroy yeah the bond and the relationship the podcast like everything it sounds dramatic but shit like that has that potential. yes oh like, that is things like that destroy marriages destroy families yeah. everything and and we went through this challenge and and frankly when was this Wednesday or Thursday that we did this Thursday morning yeah. and it is now today we're recording and it is a Tuesday so it's it's five days later and it's not only been resolved it had any any feeling of oh, I'm hurt or or upset it was completely it dis it just melted away and it came with understanding and willingness to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Yeah. Imagine how many marriages can be saved. Okay, how many new podcast world relationship coaching. <laughs> I I see potential for world peace. Seriously though. This came down to love in the end. Yes. Like, I think it was you who said that, Hannah. It, or yeah, I think it was. It was like it came down to love yeah that's more powerful than anything yeah so love does win yay it does win. i love that i love your quote i love this episode and i that love you was amazing stacia i really i you brought tears to my eyes because it is so true and the willingness to step outside of our uh, to our willingness to step outside of our perception created that growth right the willingness to go to an uncomfortable place because I've always said it you know the magic happens right outside your comfort zone mm -hmm. we were willing to put ourselves in a really uncomfortable position this morning yeah and it was just the willingness for this to move on and we said it when we started the conversation this could be an impasse right this could be the end of this podcast today Right. And I just feel like it was the new beginning. <laughs> I know, me too. <laughs> yes. A new level. Yeah. We've <laughs> reached new heights. Pop the champagne. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right. Okay, well, it. thank you, ladies. Um, and thank you everybody for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, I hope you take so much away from this. And thank you for listening. Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in to The Ripple Effect by The Alliance with Hannah Martinez, Stacia Stowe, and Sarah Jane Lita. We hope you're now vibing high and ready to create your own ripple. Drop a comment or email to let us know the ripple effect that you are creating. Music by our very own Hannah Martinez and music production by Onel Moulet. Follow us on Instagram at The Ripple Effect Pod for more high vibration content. Please rate and review us wherever you listen. Until, Until next time. time.